This is Witches, Bitches, and Dead People with Intuitive Oracle Jamie Hearn. Jamie stirs the cauldron with witches, shamans, healers, psychics, and mediums who bravely share their power and give you insight into what conversations with dead people really look like. It's probably not what you think. Sometimes hilarious, sometimes macabre, and always informative. Hello and welcome back to Witches, Bitches, and Dead People. Today I'm super excited to spend time with Katie Edwards Corbin. She is a soul sister who's on a mission to help people step into who they authentically are and she's doing so with spirit and it's just so exciting to to witness and be in her space. Katie is a visionary. She's been an entrepreneur since childhood and started her first business at the age of 24. She leads and inspires individuals, groups, and businesses to reach their highest potential. She has worked with individuals and entrepreneurs all over the world, dug deep in their companies and their hearts to pull out their authentic leadership skills to make a greater impact and income. Thanks for coming on with me today, Katie. Yes, thank you, Jamie. I'm glad to be here. Um, so when I first read your bio, I had this image of you in an archaeological dig setting, like excavating their businesses and their hearts. And I was just like, oh, yeah, she's totally done that. Maybe that's yeah. not what she's in this setting, but totally. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so I pull a card before every one of our conversations. Where'd my card go? Oh, it's over here. And today I pulled from the Native Spirit deck and I got Walking in Beauty. I get this mm. card, you know, occasionally, but it's such a pretty card. Mm. And the meaning is that you emanate beauty inside and out, which is absolutely true. Um, but what does that card, what does that bring up for you? I'll show you again. Yeah. Like, I guess I would say like even beauty for me would be like walking in light, right? Mm. Like walking at the path of light, even if it feels dark at times, <laughs> even oh, if yeah. you can't totally see at times, there's always beauty in, in the walk, right? Like if we're able to actually like look at it. I love that because the journey really is the whole point. Like, sure, there may somewhere out there be a destination, but the journey is the whole reason we're here. So yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I want to invite grandma in. Um, okay. Normally I ask people who their favorite witch, bitch, or dead people might be. And yeah. Um, yeah, grandma didn't even give me the opportunity to ask because she's like, oh no, there's no, there's no question. I'm yeah. the favorite. Like, yeah. <laughs> that would be true. <laughs> there's no one else. So tell us about your gram and, and, and who she was as a person. Yeah. So my grandma was definitely a witch, <laughs> whether or not she would uh have you know like totally resonated with the word she even had like a witch cackle that she would emanate you know on halloween so she was the kind of like light for me as a kid when i have always been intuitive i've always been uh, somewhat of a medium i've always been in touch with the spirit world and my grandma was the first one that said it was okay you know like this is this is okay it's not scary they're there they're um you know the spirit world's always available to us and she made it made it like not seem crazy basically that's amazing because so many people don't have the gift of having a loved one be that supportive so that's it just covers me in goosebumps talking about her yes <laughs> she's she's definitely te like she was always gifted to um my grandma was able to communicate she was able to foresee things uh before people died ultimately mm. that 
I, I mean, it's just so telling to see who you are as a spiritual leader with the, the background of having those gifts in your, your generational story. So I, I'm happy to invite grandma in to spend time with yeah. us today. Um, yeah. I know before we went on, I told you, I'm like, yeah, I think she probably was here too. And you, you, you said you had a similar feeling. So yeah, I, I, I pretty much knew we were going to talk, talk to her and talk about her. <laughs> she gave and me she a was, signal. <laughs> yeah. She was like, oh, well, of course, who else would you talk about first? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, so your spiritual journey started from a, a really young age, right? Yes. And how would you say that has played a role in who you've become? Yeah. So I always, so being always connected to spirit, I could never totally choose like um, a path in o- only like the third dimension, you know, like the third dimensional like numbers and all this science and Darwinism and all this stuff like I I really chose my career and my path based in spirit right based in God so I ultimately the connection for me early on allowed me to open that right like not to make myself wrong for seeing hearing and knowing what I knew And ultimately, it also what I felt like brought more people in my life that were also like that, right? You know, because it can be lonely sometimes when you're like the only one that can can see and hear. Oh, for sure. Um, And building community strengthens the power in my experience. So that's that's critical. Awesome. Um, so have you noticed the, the connection in your kids? Yes. So my son is about, he just turned five and he's highly in tune. My daughter's two. So I'm starting to kind of see things, but my son is like a direct reflection of me in male form. Mm. So he is (laughs) going through the things that I went through. Actually, when my grandma passed, uh, we took my son up in, I'm from upstate New York, and we took my son to the graveyard my grandma was going to be buried at. And he, you could just tell he could sense things, you know, like he yeah. could sense, uh, it, it's not always spirits are hanging out in graveyards, obviously, but he could sense right. like the, the, you know, the, the spirit world. And he is very connected to that because my grandma used to actually, as children, she would take us to graveyards, like for fun. Like I, My grandma did the same thing, although she had probably different motivation. She was really yeah. into genealogy. And I was like, yeah. oh, this is so cool. I love the feeling and the energy of, of being here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it's so interesting. It is. And I also have a kid that is a carbon copy of me. My husband assures me every moment of shit that I get from him, I deserve and probably more. (laughs) So good luck, Katie. Yeah, I got a while. I got a long time of this. They are gifts and beautiful mirrors. They are. Absolutely. (laughs) Well, I'd love to talk a little more about what you're doing in business because you're holding such a beautiful container for so many spiritual entrepreneurs. And I think it's just an amazing um, message that you have and your impact is huge. So let's dive into that. Yes. I'd love to. (laughs) Who's your favorite client to work with? I mean, you don't have to tell us uh, your client's identity but like describe who your favorite client would be yeah so my favorite clients that I've worked with and you know continue to work with would be um spiritually gifted uh also have the entrepreneurial spirit right so they're okay with making money they're okay with really growing their their big vision but they know that they have to have it aligned with their soul 
like they won't they won't trade money for soul or soul for money money ultimately and they really want to make the impact at that level themselves on the clients that they are working with so you're saying you don't work with lawyers yeah (laughs) (laughs) only spiritual lawyers right (laughs) i call myself a recovering lawyer (laughs) right yeah recovering lawyers (laughs) that's funny that's awesome. And I feel like your clients, at least from from what I have seen, have let go of all the victimhood that we see so much in a lot of spiritual entrepreneurs. And they're like, all right, here's, here's what needs to be done. I'm going to do it. Yes, absolutely. The victimhood right? Like around money, like I, you know, I can't have too much money. I can't make money. Money doesn't like me. Um, Really, that's all false, right? That actually creates more of a a victim around our circumstances and really standing more in a spiritually empowered place that you don't have to be less spiritual to make more money. You can actually be both. You could authentically be you in your spiritual gifts and also make a great living and you know a great vision for your future without having to trade the latter awesome and that's really an empowering perspective that not a lot of mentors are teaching yes and it's a fun perspective because for me it's like i wouldn't i i wouldn't be able to align with anything different in my heart so i don't expect other, you know, the people that come to me, I, I would expect them to have an intent to as well. Right. Uh, I, and I think that it's really just demonstrates your capacity to connect with people outside the 3D human experience. Like that higher self to higher self connection is what really is calling those people into you. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so it, I, I get so caught up in my own 3D experience that sometimes I don't pay attention to that higher self. And then, you know, they like trip you on the last step or something. And they're like, see, you should have listened. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I've had that experience myself too, as well. And I think, you know, we even though we want to be like, oh, now I've learned from it. It's still, we're still very human, right? We still get caught in, you know, the third dimensional reality. We're like, oh yeah, that's what that was for, you know, the third time in the row. So um, the humanness is always still there. I feel like in, in my journey anyways. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I guess that's why we're in this incarnation on earth because we're still working still. Through, the, through the human thing. Absolutely. Yeah. The humanness right in us. So what's a a trick or tip that you might have when somebody is bumping up against a limiting belief, like let's say around their ability to charge what they're truly worth for their spiritual gifts, but they can't articulate that belief. Yeah. So usually my my question so it would start with like a question like what's underneath that like, like what's underneath the reason that you can't you think you can't charge more well I don't think people are going to pay that well what's underneath that well I don't really think I'm deserving of that or people won't like me right and like even like you can go below the 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 analytical right because our analytical mind's gonna go well, I can't charge that much for X, you know, your, your service or your program or your, you know, whatever your offering is, usually there's something underneath that that's not really logical. It's more of a feeling, emotion, or belief that's subconscious somewhere imprinted. And that's actually what usually holds us back. It's not really the logical steps to get there. It's usually the subconscious belief. So I usually begin the question uh, with a question, right? What it's actually below that, that people can um, help to rise up for awareness. And that actually 
really, in my experience, shows who's ready to do the work. Yes. Because the people who go, I don't know, like, they're not ready. They're not there. And and it annoys the shit out of me. (laughs) Yes, it it also annoys me. I talk to where you're like, you say it, you know, but that's the willingness, right? I feel like the question allows people, instead of us telling them, the question makes it like, okay, are you willing or not to see this? And if they're willing to see it, then great. If they're not, then then they're essentially not. Right. And it's just not their season to work with us, perhaps. Yes. Um, for my own journey, that's been one of the most empowering steps that I've taken is to say, we're not a good match. And I've had to do that in both my law practice and my coaching practice. Honestly, it's way more fun in the law practice, though, because people think they're like entitled to attorney services. I told one client came in, I said, take your shit, get the fuck out. And my secretary was like, did you really just say that? I was like, yep. (laughs) (laughs) And I love that. That's awesome. (laughs) I haven't had to be that brash with any of my spiritual clients yet, but you never know. <laughs> There's always room for it, right? <laughs> if we're, if we're, if we're, you know, if that's supposed to happen, right? If that's, you know, part of our journey that we have to, you know, have that conversation. And sometimes it's just, I feel like it's a one-time thing and then it's, you know, it's complete or something, right? <laughs> I have to admit some of the, your TikToks, I, like piss my pants because yeah. you have you have this like gentle kind soft energy about you and then you have the funniest things on TikTok that are just like so honest. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I'm brutally honest. Um it, it it almost to like a fault sometimes. I actually don't really have a capacity to lie. <laughs> I've never, I've really never been able to do that. That's part of my, I think that's just part of my inner, I have the strong Sagittarius energy. So it's part of my inner being that I, I really, if I don't want to be in a situation, you'll, you'll actually know I, I can't hold it. I can't hold it back. You're probably going to get that back in your son also. (laughs) I I will. I know I'm I'm, I'm due for it. My kids will lie to me and my older son will go, dude, why are you even bothering? She's going to know anyway. Yes. <laughs> yes. The the fun of being a, a spiritually connected mom, right? <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I already know. So you don't have to lie. I actually used to try to lie to my mom when I was young. This is my, my grandma is actually my mom's mom. So my mom is also highly intuitive. I uh, not as much as my grandmother but I would try to lie to my mom and she would just immediately know and I would just be like oh why why am I even why am I even trying exactly might as well tell the truth because the truth always gets revealed anyway yes it does um I feel like your mom isn't quite as open to it as you and your grandma yes that's very true my grandma and I would talk openly about it I mean my grandma I don't know if you used to watch like Sylvia Brown we would watch that you know on Montel even when I was a kid we'd read books on it we'd talk about it we'd go to um, classes on it like even at the community college my grandma would go in at 80 years old the oldest person in the community college class and she would take an angel's you know spirit guide class she would she would actually participate and she loved to do it because it wasn't really available to her when she was a kid right well yeah because she was growing up in that like probably post-war or maybe even during world war ii like the cookie cutter what do they call them stepford wives like (laughs) yeah i i wouldn't have fit in really well then me either and neither did she right like neither would she she was actually um she was born in 1927 i believe so she lived to be 98 years old oh amazing she almost lived an entire century 
you know so yeah so she saw a lot she saw a lot like the just to think about the the shift in her three-dimensional experience from 1927 probably not even having electricity in the house probably maybe not plumbing to the to the internet like what yeah (laughs) that's amazing what a shift when we first got the internet like I would like bring my phone you know bring well not internet but she would come over to our house when we first got the internet and be like she would be interested though you know in the technology because it was just such a such a foreign concept prior to how she grew up right and and she I mean honestly I feel like she probably had an opportunity to tap into her connection more before all the electrical electronic bullshit that we're dealing with now so I'm a little envious of of that purity of of connection that she had access to yes I know and I don't even know she never really told me about like if it was accepted in her upbringing or not, I actually never really got to ask that question in 3D, um, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's really interesting because she kind of developed it and accepted it as she got older. And then she was willing to like share more with me. And I think that even developed her more that it was like the openness around it. Right. And your connection gave her a reason to continue developing it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so she didn't really like to say out loud, but you were totally her favorite. Right. <laughs> yes, we definitely had <laughs> we definitely had a, a different connection than because she had, uh, I don't even know, 20, 30 grandchildren. She had uh, eight children. So Mm -hmm. she had multiple generations and uh, my sister and I were the youngest of the original grandchildren because my mom was also the youngest. So she actually got to be a grandma by the time we were, we were kids. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting energetic exchange. Um, You also have like that soul connection with her. At least that's the feeling that I get from from her that when you were born, she recognized in you experiences she had had in other lifetimes. And she was like, took you long enough. Where have you been? Yes. <laughs> yes. Where have you been? <laughs> I've been here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> she's like no we did this shit in france <laughs> yeah we should totally tap in with her one day and, and see what kind of cool stuff she has to share um because she really is magic and i mean when i first asked you to chat with me i had no idea she was going to show up here today and be like yeah i'm gonna hijack the show hope you guys are okay with that <laughs> She, she would do that. <laughs> <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> yes. Um, so is she saying a word that I, I don't know if it's intended for me to understand it or whether it means something for you, but um, is she saying the word Pritnir? Hmm. Like, do you know that word? Mm-mm. It's kind of a colloquial word that like, like that southern tier of new of new york northern yeah. tier of pennsylvania use but it means like almost there uh. um so i don't know why she's saying that but it's it's kind of cute that she's saying and it could totally be for me because i had a great grandmother that used to use that word a lot so could be for uh-huh. could be for me too so thanks for that yeah um so i don't want to overlook the really cool gift you brought for our audience members too so can you tell us a little bit about that yeah so I created a quiz called the leadership element quiz um, and it basically brings out the strengths of leadership um, based on elements so wood fire earth metal water Um, and it really allows people really easy two-minute quiz that allows you to look at what element is strongest for you 
and then how to like almost like see the element, bring that awareness. So you have uh, an awareness of more of your strengths in, in your leadership. I love that. So do you utilize all the elements in your work you do with clients? Yes. So I do. So elements often, so I'm a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner by trade. That was my first, my entire first career. Uh, And I really, I, I value the element of the earth right and they're actually like inside of us so if you have like a lot of fire like this is just my personality too if you're really fiery really passionate sometimes things will kind of balance you out too as well where you'll have to you know take a bath or go to the ocean to get perspective so if you have an idea of what element is um most prominent you actually can use alternative elements to kind of bring you into a state of nervous system balance which is really essential for for everyone and also people in positions of leadership. Awesome. I never really took the time to stop and think about what element really is prevalent for me. I mean, if I had to guess, I would guess fire, but. I would guess too. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why, but I just get that. (laughs) Hmm, I don't know. Um, But that's a really interesting idea to find that balance. I have always been attracted to water, not so much the ocean. I hate the feeling of sand on my feet, but whatever. Mm. (laughs) But like, (laughs) I have a pond on my property and we have a a running stream on the property and the, our family farm, we have both uh, there also. So those have always been really important to me. Interesting. I love that. Yeah, it would make sense, right? Because if you think about the element of fire, like doing high achiever, you know, like really liking fast movement uh, and water gives you a sense of reflection. So it's actually in a, the the balance of, of fire. Mm. So it's it's nice to, to know that, right? So the awareness is the bringer uh, allowing you to see that that is actually very potent for you. That's super powerful. So I would recommend everybody who is either looking to upgrade their leadership or stepping into a role of leadership, go check out Katie's quiz because that's going to be nothing but helpful to you. Yes. Um, so do you want to hear my embarrassing story about Chinese medicine and acupuncture? Absolutely. Of course I do. <laughs> so... Dr. G is doing energetic acupuncture on me, talking to me about about liver points and liver chi. And the whole time I'm thinking, yeah. liver cheese? That is so fucking gross. Like, what could that be? And she's like, no, it's chi, not cheese. <laughs> that is really funny. <laughs> cheese a little bit more essential, right? Like the cheese. And far more appealing. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we like that a little better. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> now she says, okay, I'm going to tell you about chi. <laughs> no cheese. Yeah. You don't need cheese. You're not a baby cow. Don't eat it. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that story. <laughs> yeah, I... And I'm not afraid to share the silly things that I say and do because I do them pretty regularly. And that's awesome. I mean, that's the <laughs> authenticity, right? That you bring to. Oh, totally. Like you're totally clear where you stand with me and who I am. Like I, I don't bother with any masks or veils or anything. Like it, this is what you get. It's too much work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Well, I have so enjoyed chatting with you and grandma. (laughs) Yes, me too. Um, Where can people find you if they want to learn more about the work you do and about you? Absolutely. So I'm really active on Facebook. So you can find me at Katie Edwards Corbin on Facebook. And also my website is www.beyondinstitute.org. And that's a great place to check out what I'm offering. 
Awesome. And I'll give you a little TikTok plug too, because I love your TikToks. <laughs> yeah. I, I have begun the TikTok challenge of, <laughs> of being authentic on that platform as well. It's perfect. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing some time and space with us today. It's been great getting to know you more and learning about who you are, your journey, and what you offer the world. Thank you. It's been an honor to be here. Thanks for listening. See you next week. Peace and badass magic. Thank you for listening to Witches, Bitches, and Dead People with Jamie Hearn. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and review at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in. 